Dear React Router team, Seems like you guys are hanging a lot with the Google's Android team. So much of the deprecation, so much of the breaking changes, less of backward compatibility. Not a good influence, my friends. Hey there everyone, Atish here, back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to go ahead and get an in-depth guide of React Router version 6. Now jokes aside, React Router version 6 is one of my favorite update. Now you will be absolutely saying the same what I'm saying about after watching this video. Now so far, we have been using React Router till the version 5 and we have been just using it. That's it, it just works right out of the box. But from version 6, you will be actually embracing what all it provides so many of the hooks, so many of the flow that actually makes sense, it's all in all right direction. So definitely a big shout out to the team for working so much hard on to this one and taking the project in this direction, which feels absolutely reacty now. But obviously taking things and taking this entire project in this direction means there are a lot of breaking changes. In case you have been using version five, you can still continue to use that. But if you are upgrading to version six or you are getting for the first time in the version six, there are so many of the breaking changes, which all we are gonna talk about in this video. So how we're gonna proceed in this video. First, you're gonna hit that subscribe button and the like button. Yeah, that's very important. So go ahead and hit that and then we can move forward. So in this video, I expect that you have no prior experience of working with the React router, anything in the past at all. We are going to create a very fresh project in the React itself, then we're gonna install the React router version six, and from there, we're gonna write absolute every single code line by line so that you can follow along with me. I expect that you have no prior experience, but in case you do have, you will still get a lot in this video because there is a lot of changes up here. By the end of this video, you will have full understanding about the flow of the React Router version 6. In case you want to upgrade your existing project, you will have that knowledge too. Just tell me one thing, guys. I was checking the stats of my YouTube videos. So many of you watches the video, but so much less of the subscription. What, it's fun to always search my name in the search bar and then come up again here, land up here. You can hit that subscribe too. With all that, now let's go ahead and dive deep into the React Router version 6 and code it out. Welcome to the class on React Router 6. Two important points here. The first one, we're gonna start by creating a fresh application so that you can follow me along. I will omit some of the major standards in the industry. That means I won't be creating a separate file for the component itself. Rather, I'll create a simple function so that I can explain you further so that you can handle things on your own later on. The focus is on clarity on understanding the version six of this React router. So we're gonna focus on that rather than splitting the file and a whole bunch of that. Second most important thing is that please don't panic out doesn't mean that the router version 6 is available, that means 5 is all gone. No, it doesn't work like that. In the production, the updates are really, really slow, so it's going to take probably a couple of years, or probably more than that, for the applications to upgrade or move into the version 6. It doesn't happen that quick. The production is a serious issue, and we cannot actually afford our applications to crash down or face some bugs. So this kind of a migration or upgradation takes time. So in case you are having a knowledge of router 5, that is absolutely fine. This video, video will upgrade you, but doesn't mean that the, all the five knowledge that you have gone is all gone. You can still work on five as of now. Now let's go ahead and with this, let's start uh, by creating a fresh application. So first I'm gonna go up on my desktop and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new directory. So let's call this uh, directory a simple React uh, router. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go into this one. So we're gonna go into React router. And here further down the road, I would like to create a directory which is going to be uh, react dash, not react actually, rather router dash six. Yeah, this, this makes sense because it's a router version six. So let's go ahead and create that and let's go up in here. Now here we are gonna create an, a react application. So we're gonna simply say npx create react app and make sure you put a dot here as well so that it installs it in the current directory and not some other directory. It's gonna take some time, so let me skip that by fast forwarding this. That felt like eternity. Okay, so now this is all up and running. Hopefully everything is good, so let me do quick an ls and all of the packages and files are available. Now we need to install a few of the libraries. Of course, we want to play around with a router, so we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, please give me React Router DOM. Now, by the time you'll be watching the video, you don't need to place at the rate six. It should be out fully, so it should by default install the version six. But just to make sure that I am at least on version six, I'm gonna go ahead and place at the rate six. 
Now here is the interesting thing, very, very interesting thing. If you're gonna watch any of the documentation, which I'm going to show you and we'll read that as well. It also says that when you're installing React Router DOM at the rate six, also go ahead and type this command up here, which is history at the rate five. Now, why is that? Now this has something to do, which is kind of a legacy. Now in the version of React Router, the previous one, fifth, we used to access history all over the place, but that is not now the case. So let me walk you through that how it works. Let me open up my browser, here we go. So uh, this is our browser, let me close this guy. So there we go. So into this one, in case you're going to notice any of the documentation or the tutorial, anything, you're going to notice this command at the very right up here. That hey, use npm uh, add react router dom at the rate six and history five and they actually ask you to install this library. So in case you still want to have a support of commands like history.push, history.replace, go back or forward, you actually want to use that. And again, it gives you all these options, regular options we used to use like history.go minus one, history.go back, and all these options are available. But in reality, you don't need it. You, If you understand the React router properly, you will be able to do all of this. You don't need to handle one more library in the application. So we're gonna go ahead and move this aside. I'll come back to you later. Right now, so we're not gonna install this one in case you're following the documentation. So this shouldn't take much of the time. It's pretty lightweight of a package, not that much high. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. Let me fire up my code editor and from now onwards, we'll be working on with the VS Code itself. Do you trust it? Absolutely. <laughs> no problem at all. Okay, so let me expand this. There we go, nice and easy. This looks all good. Now inside the source, we have so many of the things going on. We have this app.js, we'll keep it up and running. And just by the note, sometimes uh, I have seen a couple of issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and say npm uh, start so that I know that if the default installation is all okay or not and seems like all good. So there we go, let me bring you up here as well because I will be needing you again and again. Okay, so this looks good and I'll push you here, there we go. Okay, so this application looks fine and working as a default one. Now let's go ahead and change this one to something that from where we'll be working on. So let's go into index.js. Now I won't be needing this much of the thing, so let me go ahead and remove this one. And let's go ahead and create our own app.js. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start by creating the very basics of app uh, application. Let's go ahead and call this one as home. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply say, come on, not here, come on here. Just there, <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go ahead and call this one as simply home. Instead of app, we are creating a simple home component itself. And the whole idea behind that, now usually these functions that all I'm writing are React components. So assume that they are they are being written into a separate file itself, and it is easier for us to have everything in just one file. Again, told you I'm gonna be not following the standard practices. It will help us to understand a lot. So let's go ahead and return the stuff. And in the return, I'm gonna go ahead and have a simple div. And inside the div, we are going to go ahead and have an h1. I guess I haven't enabled the emit yet. I'll do that later on. Let's go up here, classic div, and we'll have a simple h1 which will be saying home route. There we go. Okay, so this is the basic route. All I want to do is I don't like this app.js now. I would rather love to have a home component here. So there we go. Let's go ahead and remove this guy. We don't need it, save that. And now how does it look? If I go ahead and hit a refresh, now an amazing home route is available on our page. So this proves the point that yes, I'm able to do all of this. Now let's go ahead and work on with the routing. Now routing, in case you have never worked on that, that's also fine. I'll take you as the basic that how everybody can understand it. The very first step in order to have the routing in available for us, this first step is almost very similar. We go ahead and bring some stuff from React Router DOM. There we go. Now what do we bring first and foremost? This entirety of the application, the main, your home component, whether you're calling it as home component, app component, this one actually needs to be wrapped around everything. So let me walk you through with that. The first stuff that we are going to bring in is this browser router. Now, since this is too long to say, usually you're going to see people actually bring this up as a router. So this is the step one. Now, instead of wrapping it around with all of this React and stuff, we are going to go ahead and wrap it around with the router itself. So let me copy this router and remove this. And there we go. 
Now, since we have brought, bringed it this router, uh, this alone is not going to give us anything at all. So there are a couple of more things that comes up and these are recent additions in the React router version six. So we're gonna go ahead and say, bring me route and also bring me route. Okay, what is this route? Now, according to the definition or the architecture of the newer version of React router six, it says that all of your route should be encapsulated all the time inside this route. So what this means is, I'll just remove this home component for a while. And I'll say that no matter where you're defining your routes, doesn't matter if this is in the home page or any other separate component, you always and always need to wrap it around with the routes. There we go. And inside this route, now further down the road, you can define your route. This is great. Okay. One more thing I would like to mention just right up front here, we will surely have a, a detailed discussion on this is something like this. Notice here, this route is a self-closing component, but these routes are just opening and closing uh, components. No, this is not like that. You can actually go ahead and declare the routes just like that as well. And we will be doing this. This is the new thing, kind of a new uh, thing that they are embracing a lot in this. So we'll come back onto this one in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one. Entirety, let's go ahead and have a simple route, just like that. Okay. Now what this route actually takes, this route takes a couple of parameter. The first one, very familiar one, that on what path should I load this one? And there can be many paths like slash login, there can be slash logout. In this case, I'm talking about the slash, which is the home route. Now, in case you are coming up from the older version of the React router, you might be familiar with writing component here, but that is also gone. We go ahead and write simply element. And in this element, we goes like this, and then we pass on a component itself. Now, by the way, you don't need to pass on any component like this, the functional component. You can directly write your JSX here. So for example, if I go ahead and say, hey, I'm interested in having a P tag, and in that I just go ahead and say test, uh, this is all, this is all you gotta do. So let me go ahead and show you that by going up here and onto the refresh, and it says nice little test. Okay, this is available, but you won't be finding much of the people writing JSX here. This is honestly not a good approach at all. So I won't recommend you to do so. Rather, we will bring the component from some another page or somewhere else where you have kept your component and then we are gonna go ahead and work like that. In this case, our component is just lied around here so that we can actually go ahead and quickly manipulate that and I don't have to move around with thousand different pages. Let's go ahead and save this one. Okay, I go back up here, hit a reload and there we go. This is home page. this is really nice. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of the editing up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make our life a little bit easier. I don't usually prefer doing that, but I'm gonna go up here and I'll open this index.html and I will go on to the Google itself. So let's go ahead and bring in Google and I'll say bootstrap five. Now you don't need to do this. I'm just making all of our life easier by having some less strain on the eyes itself. I'm gonna copy this bootstrap and I'll paste it up here. Uh, just above the head is fine for me. There we go. And inside this body, I'm gonna go ahead and add a simple class just for this one, bg-dark. Now what this will allow us is to have less strain on our eyes. If I go ahead and hit refresh, now this is all good, but our text is obviously gone that we don't have this text. So all throughout this entirety of the stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, wherever you find the text, go ahead and just make it white. Yeah, this will make our eyes less painful. <laughs> That's it, That's all why I have done this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this one. We won't be uh, handling this one. In case you don't want to do this, that's absolutely fine. Now, in this video, we're going to have a lot of challenges. So let's go ahead and work on with that. Now, the very first challenge in front of us is uh, this home route is here. Okay, that is fine. Uh, but I don't want to have a home route like this one. I want this home route uh, to go somewhere else. So let's go ahead and say that. So the step one, we want to first create a new component. How we can do that? We can just go ahead and copy this functional component. The reason why I'm having a copy of this right into the file itself so that I can quickly create more component and show you the workflow of the React. Otherwise I would be creating new files and stuff all around. Let's go ahead and specially call this one as learn. I highly recommend to follow along with me here. Uh, please, once you understand this entire tutorial, feel free to change everything and anything that you see up here. Now this is obviously going to go ahead and say, hey, this is a learn component. And we're gonna have further down a simple H4, I guess. H4, and we're going to go ahead and say all 
courses are listed here. So basically what we are trying to make in this section is uh, we are having a kind of a replica of my website in which a home component is actually at the learn and then we have list of all the courses as well as list of all the bundles. This is the basic priority that we are trying to have and through this we are going to learn about the router. Okay, cool. Okay, further down the road, uh, this is all basics of it. Now, the goal in front of us is create another component which is going to call as my apps. But Hitesh, you just told us we want to create it slash learn. Yes, we'll do that. But first, I want to have another uh, path, which is my apps. Let's go ahead and copy this route. And obviously, the path is going to be my apps. Now, what I want you to do is that when anybody hits this route, which is slash my apps, I don't want him to, vi him to visit my apps. I want him to visit slash learn. So obviously the step is pretty simple. The first thing is I should have a route which should handle that particular thing. I know that I can do that by having a slash learn and I have just learned that how we can handle the component here. So instead of the home, I can just go ahead and say learn. But I don't have the knowledge that how I'm going to redirect this path which is slash my apps. So in this case, if I go ahead and for a momentarily purpose, if I go ahead and change this from home to learn, the both of these routes are actually on learn. There is nothing which is stopping me to visit there. So I can go ahead and say my apps and still it says learn. And if I go up here and I say learn, this also works exactly same. So what is stopping me to do so? Now you will find such variety of similar situations. So in that case, what we can do is instead of providing an element like this, uh, we will be bringing some more stuff from here. Now one thing, a side note, the React Router version 6 is full of hooks. There are so many of them that probably it's going to take like five to six videos to properly explain them, but I'll try my best to give you a lot of idea about them. It's all about hooks here. But this is not hook itself. This is another uh, kind of a component that you can bring in and that is known as navigate. So what I want to do is instead of having a pass on a component like this, I want to go ahead and pass on a component of my own, which is obviously navigate. Let's go ahead and say, hey, navigate, there we go. Now this navigate is going to go like this and we have to pass on that, where do you want to navigate? So this takes a parameter of two. This navigate is almost similar to kind of link, but not really. Okay, let's go ahead and work on, where do you want to redirect? I want you to redirect to a path slash learn. Okay, let's go ahead and save this one. Now let's go back up here and say that, hey, it automatically redirected me to learn, but let's try and manually try to go to my apps. There we go. I go up here and it automatically redirects me to learn. Now let's go ahead and try to go back. Now I'm not able to go back. And if I click multiple times, then I go back onto the home route. Now why this is happening? This is a very interesting feature to work on. If I again try to go my apps and I come back, it again, comebacks but if I go ahead and try to say hey my apps and again there we go so sometimes it's going to work sometimes it's not going to work like this uh, but I'll tell you the reason why this was happening in the first time we saw the demo but in the second time we were not able to see that the reason why this is happening because the navigate the default functionality of the navigate is actually to to lay up whatever the route you're asking up at the very top of it kind of in addition to that. It is almost similar to something if in case you have worked with the mobile application that sometimes you pop over the screen on top of it. So this is what similarly it is doing. Now in case you want to truly redirect the person, you have to actually use this keyword which is replace. If you make the replace is true, the behavior that we saw, the odd one, that will 100% be gone. And also it will be an actual route of slash learn. It's not going to be added on top of any existing route. So this is what this keyword is, and you'll be using this quite a lot. So now I can go ahead and say my apps, there we go. And I can go back, it always will always work like that because it's not laying anything on top of it. Okay, so this is the step one that we got up here. Now let's go ahead and learn a little bit more. So this is all good, seems good. Now in this learn, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more of the stuff. So let me go up here and add a few links. Now, you can add a link with the a tag and href. We have already seen that, but we don't do this much in the React. We actually go ahead and bring some another uh, concept up here, uh, which is known as link. Now why we use a tag instead of the link? Can we use a tag? Yes, of course you can use a tag. But the problem with the a tag is whenever you use a tag, it reloads the entire page. 
wherever you use it. But in case you use a simple link tag, it doesn't, it doesn't reload the entire page. And that's the whole idea of creating these SPAs, a single page application. We don't want the page reload. So this actually mimics the functionality of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this link just like that. And this link is gonna go for courses. Okay, fine. And uh, let's go ahead and use it too here as well, because link obviously is like almost href. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and say slash learn slash course. And let's duplicate this one. This one is going to go ahead and move on to bundle. And this one will obviously go to bundle. Now I'm going to go ahead and add just a uh, pipe here to make a little bit of the difference between both of them. Otherwise, they'll be just butting up together. I don't want that. Okay, so this is all good. Now we're going to learn the different aspect and different concept of that. Okay, we are on to the learn. We have these courses and the bundle. A little bit not that much visible. I can add a CSS up here as well. Uh, but since we are having a bootstrap, I think we should be able to do this up here. Again, this is just to make sure that you are able to see these properly. You don't have to add these class names and stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and add a class name up here, which is going to be simply text dash white. Let me see if it is working and hit a reload and it is working. So why not to change uh, these texts into the button itself? Let's go ahead and since we have already introduced and injected the bootstrap, let's go ahead and say button dash, uh, this one is going to be success and we can actually copy this and have this one up here and this one is going to be button dash uh, maybe primary. Okay, so we should be able to see reload. Okay, this is much more visible and much more good. Now, if I go ahead and click on the courses, I'm able to move on to a new component. There is no component to handle that, but at least my URL is changing, which is slash learn slash course, that is fine. If I go up into the bundle, it says slash learn slash bundle. Okay, that is also fine. I have introduced this functionality and my page is also not reloading. So that is fine as of now. Now, another thing that you'll be doing with these router is kind of a parent nesting. We have seen here that the route is pretty simple, slash learn slash course slash learn slash bundle. So this gives me idea that whatever is happening is happening inside this learn. The philosophy be behind this React Router 6 is in such scenarios or such cases where you have this slash learn, you don't need to define the entirely of a new route. You don't need to say something like this, hey, slash learn, and then we are going to go ahead and say slash course. You are allowed to do so. There is no problem with that. You can do it. But actually what makes sense in this case is not to do like this. This is exactly where we actually break this route into uh, not as a self-closing component. So just like this. There we go. Now inside this one, I can go ahead and simply say, hey, I want to have a route. Again, we can have a self-closing one this time because it is inside the learn. And this alone itself gives you a more clarity of what components are inside another component or at least how the routing works just by having a glance of it. So this is what I absolutely love about it. Now, notice here one very thing which is going to give us an error. So we're going to go ahead and say slash learn and after that it was a slash course. Now, then we go ahead and simply say, hey, I want to load up an element. So what is the element? Now, the first thing is we want to load an element here, but not entirely a new element. We want to load an element right beside all of this. So where all of this, I want to load something inside this component itself, kind of a parent child relation. So I'm going to go ahead and take this home component. We'll make a copy of this and let's create two different components for courses and bundles. So this one is here. So all of my courses and bundles will be handled here. So let's go ahead and call this one as courses. And I'll like to have a copy of this one. And this one will be bundles. There we go. And this one obviously is not going to say home route or something like this. This would be rather more over like uh, all the bundles are listed here or something like that. So let's call this one as simply bundles. So I'm going to go ahead and say this one is my bundle list and at the bottom of it, let's go ahead and have a simple H4 and let's call this one as bundle card. So this is how it usually happens. You actually see a component and inside the component, there is a list of courses. Further down the road, there is a list of bundles, some, something like that. And this should be rather uh, courses. So let me copy this first and paste it up here because this makes sense of bundle. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and this one remove this and these are courses come on courses list and the course card courses card yeah that's fine okay moving further down the road in this element we haven't passed on anything yet so we obviously want to have this one so first let's take care of one by one things this one is going to have a courses there we go self-closing now this is going to give us a small error let me go ahead and save this one no errors up here bundle is not used we'll use that uh, but this is a little bit of a different scenario up here I go ahead and reload this one now notice here it says hey absolute path slash courses nested under the path slash learn is not valid now what it's saying is that you have already nested things inside slash learn so I am pretty aware of it I know this that whatever you are trying to have this is inside slash learn so you don't need to again say me that slash courses I will use my brain and I'll do it automatically for me so all I have to do is remove this uh, slash here before the courses in fact you can go ahead and remove the slashes up here as well it will still work fine uh, but I'm, I'm not gonna recommend that one at least at this point of time surely you can see slash without having a slash it works fine and it understands the hierarchy of the architecture of the routes pretty well now but I'm not pretty much sure until unless I test it in the production a little bit more so notice here now it works fine okay and uh, let's have another of the component let's copy this one this will go to the route of bundles this one should go onto the courses technically and uh, this one is going to go ahead and have bundles now since we have made this one courses and bundles we need to make sure that our link is actually pointing to the correct direction and this one is saying courses and this one is going to go bundles let's test out so far of the application we have learned quite a lot up here so there we go now we have got everything going away looks like did we missed up something <laughs> it seems like slash learn slash bundles and what is our url it is course it should be courses yeah there we go so now we have course and now we have bundles okay this is working so far now good now what we want to further do down the road we obviously can mount in another separate component but our job is not yet done we can actually create something like we have created slash learn so I can create something like slash dashboard and low mount those component there but this is not what you usually do you usually like to mount component inside one another so what I want to do is that whenever I say courses the component courses should not mount on some another page this is inside learn so it should mount inside this learn component but it is not mounting and this is where another of the component comes into the picture which is known as outlet so outlet actually defines precisely that where inside component it should actually appear whether it should appear at the very top of it like here or it should appear at the very end of it in my case it makes sense to appear at the very end of it so I'm gonna go ahead and say bring the outlet here this is like a pipe you uh, put up water at one place and wherever you open the outlet it just goes there so I kind of uh, assume it that way once I have this outlet now I have said that in case a route is being nested here as well whatever is being flowed should actually come as an outlet here let's go back up here and hit a reload now notice here after the courses this is the outlet where the pipe is opening up so if I go ahead and say bundles my bundles are coming in my bundle card are coming in and the courses my courses are coming in okay looks nice so far okay so so far we have done a pretty good job in understanding how the routes and everything works on now let's go ahead and move on to a little bit more of the complicated stuff now further down the road inside this course is up here I want to have another of the route what basically I want to do is inside the courses if I go ahead and say something like slash and I go ahead and say angular I want to grab this value because this is something you will be doing quite a lot also known as params not angular but some of you might be getting familiarity with IDs like one or two or three whatever that comes after the courses I want to grab that value and want to display that on the screen it will help me to understand how to grab parameters from the URL itself now let's go ahead and work on with that so I'm gonna go ahead and say that hey obviously it is pretty obvious now that we don't need to create another route because it is coming up after the courses so I can go ahead and make the structure however it is defined and recommended to us in react router version 6 so I'm gonna go ahead and remove did I remove something bad accidentally 
No, doesn't seem like. So let's go ahead and say, hey, I want to go ahead and say route. And I should not be saying like this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now this is all up here and I can go ahead and define further route inside it. There we go, it can be self-closing. So this time we need to say path and I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, this time the path is going to be like this and we'll be saying colon and I'll be saying course ID. You can name it whatever you like. And in this case, we are going to go ahead and define another element for this one so that it's much more easier for us to handle the things. Okay, and there we go. Let's keep it blank for a minute and let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this uh, element who will be handling this one here. Now this course ID is going to be handled by an element, a standalone element, which is going to be called as simply course ID. The job of this course ID is going to be simple. Just display the parameter, whatever is coming up there. Let's go ahead and make a copy of this one. We can handle it in these ones as well, but I wish to create a separate one. Okay, let's go ahead and call this one as simply uh, course ID is the element name up here. Now in this course ID element, let's go ahead and remove this one. We don't need you. I just want to dump whatever the parameter is giving me. So URL params is and this is where I want to display my parameter. Now, how am I going to do this one? Now, this is a little bit of the tricky one. This is where actually your hooks kicks in. So we need to bring our very first hook from, notice here, this is how so much in depth. Previously, we didn't had these many options available from the router, it was very restricted. We use just uh, probably browser routes, routes and links, and that's pretty much it. Now it is so much useful. The first we are going to study about is the use params. As soon as you get this use param hook, now it can automatically look into this, uh, your, your all the routes. And here, whatever you have mentioned, in this case, I have mentioned course ID. So it can actually give you access of that. How to access that? Inside the course ID, just use this hook. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, I would like to borrow some stuff, all the stuff that you are giving me with the use params, just like that. In here, I can mention this course ID, if there, in the routes, if I would have said ID, I would be saying ID here. If I've said course ID there, I would be saying course ID here. Now it's just displaying, it's a matter of just displaying a simple variable up here. So let's go ahead and call this one as course, not courses, course ID. There we go. And that's all it takes. Okay, now we need to just inject this uh, route, not route, the component up here. So let's go ahead and inject this one. There we go. That's it. Now let's go ahead and try this out. So if I go up into the courses, right now it says nothing. But if I go ahead and say Angular, so just take a close look how this is happening. Now we have loaded the learn, that's fine. We are aware of that. Now we have also loaded the courses, that's also fine. So where this Angular component is actually going in, this is going inside the courses. So we need to check out the component where the courses are defined. So this is my courses are defined. So remember always the outlet, outlet is the key. So I want the information of this course's ID inside some component. I don't want to load it up standalone. But by the way, by the way, in case you are worried that no, I want to, I want this URL parameter to be standalone, then you should not load it inside this much of the nesting. You should not do it. If you want to load it up like this, that hey, I am not interested in loading it like that. I want to make it absolutely outside. You can actually declare it on this indentation level. I hope this makes it a little bit clear. So let's go ahead and find it. So inside the courses, this is a, a handing up, uh, ending up. So inside the courses, I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, my pipeline outlet comes up here. Let's go ahead and see that if this time it is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh, and there we go. URL paramas, params, should be a little bit better. Uh, there we go. Params, URL params is course ID. Now, I will be able to change it to Angular to React, and it should just display that URL React, and I should be able to change it to my name also, and that will also come up. Okay, so this is the basic that we have done, that we have got the course ID and URL ID and everything all up here. Now let's make it a little bit more fun and interesting. So next up, what I want to do here is that right now I have to actually go up manually and click on these links and everything. I want you to show more demos, right, just by clicking on these courses and bundles. So what I will do, I'll create a simple array up here. So inside these courses, wherever I'm declaring all these ones, so I'm gonna go ahead and simply say, hey, 
let's go ahead and have a simple const course list and inside this course list let's go ahead and create a simple array so let's throw up some of the courses name up here or the tech name whatever you like to call this one so we're going to go ahead and throw up react angular view view and node.js i guess these are enough for us now let's go ahead and create a, or collect a random name out of this one so we're going to go ahead and simply call this one as simply random course name and how we're going to grab the random name we're going to go ahead and say course list if i go ahead and say zero it will give me first value but i want a random number in this place so i'm going to go ahead and use math dot floor floor <laughs> there we go and further down the road i can use a math dot simple random up here there we go this uh, needs to be multiplied so we're going to go ahead and multiply it by course list dot length so hopefully this will give me a course name uh, randomly every single time and now let's go ahead and craft a couple of links up here as well now i definitely don't want these links to be uh, below the outlet so i'm going to go ahead and click up here so just where i'm saying that hey this is my course card and this is my bundles i'll not touch the bundles that much i'll just work up here okay now this time uh, previously we have used uh, these links here where are our links there we go so these are our links so so far in the entire of the these routings and browser routing we have used is the link but this time we have got something of a new one and this time i really want to talk on that one so we'll bring another of the guy and this is nav link what's so special about the nav link how is it different from the link itself uh, to be honest, not precisely too much on just a couple of instances it actually is different. It is it still can be used to navigate people here and there, uh, but there are two more properties that it actually gives you in addition to the basic link. So let's go ahead and work on with that. So let's go up here. Instead of the link, we are going to go ahead and say, hey, uh, I would like to add a paragraph here. Uh, we're going to say more test up here so that we know things are loading up properly. More test. You don't need to do this. Now let's go ahead and simply say nav link and just like that this is my nav link. Now what do you want to have in this nav link? First let's have a course name so I'm going to go ahead and throw up simply random course name up here. Now just like we have the link in the nav link also we have this two here. Now in this two we're going to go ahead and add a simple link up here there we go. So where this link is going to go let's use the back ticks and I'm going to go ahead and say slash learn remember in the links and the nav links you have to write the proper path and the entirety of the path so slash learn slash courses and then we're going to go ahead and add a variable so just like that not four dollar and we're going to go ahead and random course name okay so this is looking absolutely good as of now let's go ahead and save this one now i am deliberately not giving it any class name or anything like that uh, there's a reason behind that as well let's go ahead and hit a reload and notice here we have this really tiny angular coming in so that is also nice let me go ahead and change at least its text uh, i won't be even changing the text i'll show you why so notice here it says angular up here okay that is fine and if i go ahead and click on uh, like courses it goes me to courses let me go ahead and hit a refresh this time it gives me view so every single time a new course is coming in now what i want to do is further i want to display some data based on what is being clicked up here so notice here this is taking me to node.js so we are getting the url parameter as node.js if i again go back on to bundle and then courses it again gives me different ones so i'm able to get data up here so that is also nice now what's interesting is if we get two of the nav links let me go ahead and make a copy now there are two links this time this time this is not going to go into variable this will rather say tests because we offer tests as well and instead of the variable this one is going to say tests okay so what i'm trying to do up here you'll get that you'll understand that in a minute let me go ahead and refresh up here now we have uh, a nice link so let me go ahead and add a class to this one so we're going to go ahead and simply add a class name so that we can see what's happening btn and we're going to say btn dash light save that and hit a reload and there we go Okay, so now in front of us, there is a situation. I go to the bundle, I go to the courses. Now I click on the tests, it says tests. If I go onto the view, I get a view. 
but there is no way to find out that which one is active. Obviously right now there is a button but still you are not able to find out that which of the tab is active. I want to highlight it, maybe add properties to it, maybe add class names or something like that. So how we can work on with that? So let's go ahead and add this one. And that is exactly why this nav link is used. Links doesn't give you that, but nav links actually give you some of the properties that you can use right inside the style. So style works like this. In this, you can actually fire up a method just like this. Now inside this method, you can actually uh, extract a thing which is known as is active. Now you don't have to declare it. In the previous days, we have to use the manual methods to active the links and all of that. Now you don't need to do any of that. Now what I can do is here, I can go ahead and simply return what do you want to do when this is active. Now this, when this is active, uh, I want to have a simple background color. So I'm going to say back background color. So let's use something which is, we want to use selectively. So we're going to say when this is active, then do something, otherwise do something. So we're going to say that when this is active, use pink as a color otherwise in the background, otherwise this is going to be simply yellow. Okay, so let's see now if we are able to actually see that or not in action. I'll hit a reload just for the sake of it and notice now the angular turns into a yellow, although we don't have this one. So let's click on this one and now it is angular. If I go up into the test, it again goes to yellow because it's not active. If I click on up here, it turns into pink. I know this is a little bit difficult to see right now, but I hope you are at least able to see something that how we can actually make these things. And this is the one property that comes as a bonus in this one. So I hope having you, you're having a fun with this one. Okay, so I can come back to bundle, load another one, this time view, that's nice. Bundle, this time it's React, so that is all fine and nice. Okay, now let's take it to one more step further. Now the next goal in front of me is really simple. I have this URL params is course ID. So just try to assume that you are clicking on the courses, all courses are loading up. This is a React course, this is a test course, whatever it is. And when you click on that particular course, now you are taken up onto the detail page of the course where you are seeing all the information. This right now is just URL says params, but based on the React parameter that you receive on the URL, maybe you have made a database call, received all the information and have displayed based on the route. But further down the road, I want you to say that what if I want to further carry some information? Maybe on this page itself, there is a button. First, let me give you that button so that you can have a more idea and visualization of how things are happening. So inside this div, let's go ahead and grab a simple button. We're going to go ahead and simply have a button. And this button is going to take you somewhere. Okay, let's go ahead and say price. Yeah, that is fine. Let's go ahead and give some classes of the bootstrap since we already got the bootstrap up here. So we're going to say btn and btn dash warning. There we go. Okay, so these are all good. Now it will help us to visualize it further down the road. Let's click on bundle courses and we are onto the Node.js course itself. Now why is it not loading up? Let me go ahead and quickly check that. Okay, just was a matter of refresh. I didn't refresh the page at all. So okay, so now we have refreshed this and let's flow the understand the flow. So here all of my bundles are being shown up. Here all of my courses are showed up and inside this course card, I'm interested in having a view course or the tests as well, view test maybe. I'm interested in knowing about the view course. It is showing me all the details of the view, but it's not showing me the price. Now I want to click on the price and I want to move on to some another page and see the price. So I want to carry some information with me. Now you might be asking that, hey, are we going to carry further down the road like slash view slash price? Yes, we can, but I want to give you another perspective of the scenario. Maybe you are on to all together some different route, maybe different component, different page. So how you can travel this information? Now, we usually don't worry about that much because we use Redux or some state management to grab the information, but you can actually carry some information from here as well. Now let's go ahead and work on with that. So here inside the button itself, I'm going to go ahead and work on with that. I'll come back onto this one here. First, let's bring up the route that where we want to carry this information. And for this one, I have to create a dashboard. So let's go ahead and create a dashboard too much. I'll copy this one up here and let's create here. So this is where, this is the new component where I want to carry all the information. Maybe this is a dashboard. Now inside this dashboard, I'll just remove this one here and I'll say what information I am carrying. 
So it says info that I brought in, the info that I got here is, and then we want to just display this information. Right now we don't have anything, so we're gonna just keep it like that. Okay, so where do you want to load this particular thing? Now it's totally up to you. I'll just use this route after here. So probably we can actually minimize this one. There we go. So after these all learned whatever we have to do, now I'm creating this route up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say route, just like that, it can be self-closing. Here, what is the path that you want to have this one? I want to have it on the root, so I can either write it directly dashboard, still old habit, so I'm gonna go ahead and write slash dashboard. You don't need to write slash anymore, it just works out of the box. And the element that you want to serve, there we go. The element that I want to serve is dashboard, there we go. Okay, so in theory now at least, if I go up here on to slash learn, not learn even, I guess we can directly move on to the dashboard and it says info that I got here. Okay, that is nice. But I want to come here by clicking on the prize itself. Now obviously by clicking on the prize, I can come here and I can use my uh, link, I can use my nav link. But the question is which one is the best in this place that you want to use? Now, you don't want to use any of that. I'll show you that, that how you can actually work with that. You want to use something new. And by the way, you can use link to spoiler alert, but I want you to use new thing up here. I want you to bring up a navigate feature here. So we'll bring up two new hooks this time. So first one is use navigate. And within a minute, I'll be using this one as well, which is a use uh, location. So first, let's talk about this use navigate and how you can use that. Now these two things, use navigate and use locations, they are pretty simple to use. So let's move back at the, at the bottom. Where do we want to use it? I want to use them and this is the pricing. This is where I want to use it. So first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead up here and I will say that, hey, I want to use navigate and navigate actually comes from this hook, use navigate. And that's it. That is all it takes as a prerequisite. Now you can go into any button or wherever you want to actually uh, take this information. I want this one not to be link or nav link, so I'll be directly saying I want to hit on an event, which is on click. So you go up like this, there we go. Now inside this, I want to fire up a method, there we go. And further, I want to use the navigate, there we go. That's how you use the navigate. Now in case you want to use or you have used something which we have talked just about that, I want to move people somewhere around. And you might be remembering the history, so I can use history.push, history.replace to move anybody anywhere. Now, you don't need history, you can actually directly use navigate in, in place of history. So I'll just say navigate, and I can, by the way, uh, say just minus one to navigate one page back, one page, you'll see a lot of people use that. I don't use it that much in my code, I find this a little bit confusing. I think that navigate should have uh, directly the proper path and route where it should go. In this case, I want it to go to dashboard and I will copy it because I might make a mistake. So I'll bring it from the route itself. So this is dashboard, so copy that, come back up here. And this is where I want to bring the dashboard. Okay, so now in theory, at least the progress that we have made, anybody clicks on the button, he will be able to move on that. I'm not using link, I'm not using nav link, but rather navigate, which is a hook itself. Let's go back up onto the browser and see how much progress we have made. Refresh, I will not forget this time. So bundles, courses, I go onto React page and I want to find the pricing of the React. I go up here and there we go. I'm able to move onto the dashboard, but I'm not bringing any info with me. Now, when you use the navigate itself, this navigate has a second parameter as well. And you can pass on an object like this. And in this, you can pass on this state and in this state, you can pass on or take whatever you want to take with yourself. Uh, maybe you want to take a pricing like 299, so it's expensive these days, so 399. <laughs> okay, so this is what we got. And there we go. Now if I go back, again, you cannot just hit a refresh because you are not carrying some information on the very first place. I'll go to the bundles again, courses, and this time uh, Node.js, and I'm saying, I'm gonna say price, and there we go, I see nothing. Now you might be wondering why this is nothing. Yes, you are carrying the information, there is no wrong in that, but you haven't actually uh, instructed this dashboard that, hey, this is how you have to extract the information. 
So this time, let's go ahead and use the, another hook that I placed at the very top. So we're gonna go ahead and say const location and this time this is going to say use location there we go and this location can actually use this one so instead of these dashes i'm going to go ahead and move on and we'll say hey location dot state so whatever you're passing from there it comes up now here's a very very big note to yourself now whenever you use navigate or anything which is taking advantage of this navigate hook or use uh, location anything everything is actually serialized so no matter what information you're going to be passing up it is going to convert it as a string so just be cautious about that it is mentioned in the documentation by the way okay let's go ahead and see if we have made any progress or not so i'll go back i'll refresh up here as well let's go to bundle courses how why we are getting node.js all the time yeah this time view so view and we are going to get the pricing and this time i'm carrying 399 now it's not about just 399 you can carry more information maybe you are not interested in carrying the 399 maybe you are interested in carrying the course id itself you can actually go ahead and do that let me go ahead go back and bundle courses react is good and we are going to take the price and we are taking uh, 399 why we are taking 399 again i uh, shouldn't be taking 399 I'm taking course ID this time. Did I save it properly? It should go course ID. Let's go ahead and try it one more time. Let's go back, refresh a couple of times. Node.js and the price. There we go. This time we are taking Node.js. Probably I didn't save. Let's try it one more time. Maybe I have made a mistake. Refresh, bundle, courses, React, price. I'm taking React with me. Okay, so this is the basic, this is the one way. I told you, carrying the information can be done with another method also. So we need to learn that also. So in case you don't want to use Navigate, but uh, Navigate is actually looking much more promising. I need to dig up a little bit more to find out which one is the best, but you can also take some information with the link itself. Hey, you could have taught, uh, told us earlier that we can just use the link. Yes, but otherwise you wouldn't be that much focused on the Navigate link. So let's go ahead and uh, just below this button, I'm gonna go ahead and add a simple link just like that and this is going to go ahead and say test link and inside this just like we use the two there we go we are going to again move to the same route which is going to be dashboard so copy that and dashboard now in here also you can actually go ahead and pass on the state but how you pass on the state is actually different this time it is a prop in here and this prop uh, needs to take all the information inside uh, just like this you can pass on like course id and all the values or something like this but this needs to be inside the string so i need to dig up a little bit more that how the flow actually is working I'm, i was reading the docs uh, much more but just to show you that if you want to carry uh, something like node.js or maybe a variable you can actually go ahead and carry that so let's go ahead and not node.js let's carry django so that would be unique now, if I click on the link, I'm carrying Django. If I'm clicking on the button, I'm carrying this course ID. Let's go ahead and see and verify that. Go back, hit a refresh a couple of times. I go into the test link. If I go up test link, I'm carrying the Django with me. If I go back, I click on the price. I'm carrying the React with me. So there we go. So I told you, this is the two way. I personally found that using this hook and navigate is much more friendlier for my, my taste. But again, if you don't want to bring it up, link is also going to find, work fine for you. Okay, so let me quickly summarize what we have learned so far. Is this all about the browser router or the entire React router version 6? No, there are so many amazing hooks that probably if you'll request enough in the comment section, I would definitely create another video discussing more in depth. But let me quickly summarize. So we have seen that, that a lot of things are changed up here and there is no switch or anything like that. Uh, there is a router, which is a browser router. Everything needs to be wrapped up inside that. And this is something you need to do in the home page in case you are using some child route in another component still there everything needs to be wrapped up inside this routes there is an s at the end and inside the routes you can go ahead and declare all these routes as much as you want now in this version of the react router this time we are more focusing on the hierarchy itself so everything you declare on the same level of kind of indentation or hierarchy on the branch uh, then you can actually go ahead and avoid these slashes so instead of my apps you can go ahead and use just the apps i still use slashes 
And in case you want any route further inside that, it is logical now that you go ahead and indent them inside them. You can expand this route into an opening and closing uh, component itself. And then you can say slash learn slash courses slash course ID. It helps us to understand the routes just from the one page up here. So I love this one. Also, we have seen that the exact keyword is also gone, gone up here. We have also seen that now we, instead of the component, we have got elements and element directly takes the JSX or the JSX component declaration. Further, I can use the replace. I have seen that how we can use the navigate itself to redirect anywhere or anywhere we want. And further, we have seen how we can access the course ID or any of the uh, dynamic values that we have here. So this is also nice. Further, we have seen uh, going up here that how we can use these outlet methods. So wherever you want the children's to display, you just have to open the pipe there. That is the outlet. Further down the road, we have seen that how we can actually use this active property right, directly right out of the box. We don't have to use use history and all those magic that he used to do. Now this is not required. We can just directly go ahead and work on with the nav link itself. And nav link give us this as active and based on that, you can apply any property or anything, whatever you like. And further, we have seen that how we can actually use these nav links with the buttons and basic stuff. Further, this is the interesting part. This is we saw that how we can actually uh, access the URL parameters by this navigate and all these stuffs, the course ID, use params, not navigate, use, uh, use params. This is how we access the parameters in the URL itself. Further down the road, we saw that how we can carry some information. So we saw that there are two methods, the navigate and the link itself to carry some information. My favorite one is navigate itself. So this is the basic overview and enough to actually go ahead and get you up and running with the React router version 6. Is it all? No. Let me show you. There is so much more going on up here. And uh, this is all that they got up here. Now this is the tutorial. This is the main concept. This is where you're going to see a lot of the meaty information that comes in. So remember, I told you there are two ways of carrying the information. Yes, this is exactly coming up from the documentation. So notice here, you set location state in two ways, by using the link and by using the navigate. So these two examples are there. They are a little bit uh, not so like beginner 101 friendly, still friendly, very friendly. Uh, but this is all what I've showed you. But again, everything is obviously coming up from the documentation itself, just the easier way. If you have enjoyed this, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And in case you want much more in depth further down the road, let me know in the comment section. I would love to work on another one of that. Let's go ahead and catch up in another such video. Whew, that was a lot and a pretty big video. And there is still a lot to talk about the React Router version 6. In case you want me to follow up this video, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. There is still more, a little bit more to talk about the version 6. So let's go ahead and catch up in another such video, assuming that you have already hit that subscribe button. And I'm going to surely catch you up in the next video.